qualities of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Sufatillah, asma illahi husna. I remember when I was in the US, the first night of Tarawih like this, there was a brother and he would come to me and he said, I have a question for you. And I said, okay, so what is your question? And he would say, what is Eid? I say, well, we just started. <coughs> One month before Ramadan, everyone changes their uh, profile on Facebook and they say, Allahumma balighna Ramadan. This brother was totally different and he would say, Allahumma balighna shawwal. Like, give me the life till the month of shawwal. I want to survive in the month of Ramadan. And the reason why this brother was saying this, because he didn't know the hikmah of the fasting, the hikmah of the ibadah, and all of them are about to put taqwa in our hearts and to know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is a good time to remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to know Him. You cannot love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You cannot come close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala without knowing Him. And how do we know Him? Through His names and beautiful names and attributes in the Quran and in the Sunnah. When I look at the 19 names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, there's a hadith from the Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in the authentic hadith in the lay tis'atan wa tis'ina isman man ahsaha dakhla jannah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has 99 names Whoever does ihsa will go to Jannah. Some people think ihsa is just by memorizing them. But the most important thing is to know their meaning and apply them to your life. So if you know, for example, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is a razzaq, you don't expect anything from anyone except Allah. If you know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is al ghafur the most forgiving, no matter how big your sin is, it is never bigger than the mercy of Allah. So once you know the meanings of these names, and you live them, you apply them to your life, you will love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala more and you will get closer to Him. When I look at the names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we know some names. Some of us know some of, you, of those names. Like Rahim, we have no problem. Kareem, we have no problem. And so on and so forth. But some names are always misunderstood, like Al-Jabbar, Al-Mutakabbir. People take them at face value and they don't know what they actually mean. And there are some names that people have no clue what they mean. Like as samad for example. Most people don't know what as samad means, although they read Qul Allah Ahad Allah samad almost every day. So inshallah throughout this month, we're going to take a look at some of those names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, explain the meanings of the names and maybe share some stories. There is something very interesting about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran, unlike any other book. The Quran is probably the only book in the world that doesn't have the name of the, top of, the, uh, of the author on the cover. Think of any other name. There's always the name of the author on the cover. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not have his name on the cover. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reveals himself in every ayah inside. He talks about himself, he talks about his qualities, what he wants from you, what he wants you to avoid, <laughs> and how to worship him, and so on and so forth. One of the descriptions of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at the end of Surah Rahman, تَبَارَكَ اسْمُ رَبِّكَ ذِي Ikram. Not only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is blessed, but His names are blessed. It says, blessed is the name of your Lord, full of uh, majesty and honor. How can the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and His names and attributes be blessed? And the ulama say, me and you, we have some qualities. Like I can't describe you as Kareem, I can't describe you, I can't give you any attribute, but sometimes your name or your description does not fit you. But in the case of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, his descriptions always fit him. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is Kareem, he is the Lord of generosity. He is Ghafoor, he is the Lord of forgiveness. But look at us. Because names are for free, you don't pay money when your name, you give a name to your son or daughter. And because you can choose any name you want, you don't pay taxes for the name, you can choose any name you want. Even if the name doesn't fit the kid. How many times you come across someone who is always like this? And his name is Saeed, which means happy, right? You come across someone whose name is Kareem, and if you want something from them, we're doing a fundraiser, or you ask them for something, shoot me first, I'm not going to pay anything. Although Kareem means generous. You see, for example, someone who is, who said Jamil, who said, uh, of course, uh, Jamil, I'm not going to say anything, Jamil means you're beautiful, but sometimes uh, the description doesn't fit the name, right? When I see the person, I remember Shrek from, you know, the movie. But anyway, 
They're on the creation of Allah, I'm not saying anything, right? And sometimes there was a guy in one of those masajid, he's always fighting with everyone in the masjid. He loses his temper. So, say for example, if the mic is loud, he fights with the technician. If the imam recites one rak'ah, one ayah extra, he fights with the imam. If, the, if it is cold, he will fight with someone. If it is hot, he will fight with someone. So I came to him one time, mashallah, brother, you're fighting with everyone in the masjid, you're losing your temper. Can I please get your name? Sabr, patient. <laughs> the patient one. So the name doesn't fit the person at all, right? I think what we need to do, when the person is born, we can call him Mr. A, Mr. B, Mr. C, wait for 30, 40 years to see which name will fit the person. Because most of the time it's a total disaster, the name doesn't fit at all. So this is one aspect of looking at it. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if He is Kareem, He is Kareem all the way. If He is Ghafoor, He is the Lord of forgiveness. He forgives Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the names fit Him. The other thing is, and this is the last thing, I got only one minute. Uh, the names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and our names, they are only similar in the name. Like we have Haya, we have life. Allah has life. al Hay, But His life is totally different from ours. He has knowledge, ilm, we have knowledge. But what is our knowledge compared to his? He is al Karim and we are Kiram. What is our generosity compared to him? Right? So what we do, to make it clear to you, you can't describe me as Karim. But if I love you, I'll give you. If I don't like you, you're not getting a penny from me. You can describe me as Ghafoor. I forgive, I let go. But if you do something bad, I always remind you of the terrible things you did last, like 10 years ago. Okay, I'm going to forgive you now, but if you do something 10, 15 years down the road, you remember 15 years ago when you burnt my biryani? Right? How can I forgive you? So you always remember. But in the case of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He is the most forgiven. If you make tawbah and you are sincere, the sin will not even show on your book on the day of Qiyamah. It's gone. Because Allah is Kareem. And he is ghafoor. Once you are forgiven, he will never remind you. No one will know about it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is kareem. He will give you if he likes you. And even if he doesn't like you, la yuhibbu al-dhalimeen, la yuhibbu al-kafirin, but still he provides for them. He gives food, he gives water, sahha, health, he gives air, he gives eyes and ears, even to the people who deny his existence. They say that he doesn't exist. Wal-ayyadu billah. So have you ever heard that someone like Karl Marx, who denies the existence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he gets a message from somewhere telling him, if you don't believe in Allah by the end of the month, we are cutting your air supplies and you will die. It never happens. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created them, He provides for them, whether He likes them or not. But in our case, if we love someone, we give them. If we don't like them, we don't give them. And this is the difference between our attributes, qualities, and the qualities of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They fit in. But in our case, they don't fit us. So inshallah, this is the end of the halaqa today. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I'm going to make a short dua for sister uh, Ruqayya, her son, Dr. Uh, Salahuddin uh, Ali. Uh, he was in Jordan, and she passed away. She was in the intensive care unit. He just sponsored one of the classrooms in Main Gate uh, for his mom. So the classroom is named after her mother. This was done yesterday, and today she passed away first night of Ramadan. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept her and give her Jannah and the Shafa of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to give her for Dawsa al-A'la and to accept her and accept this as Husnul Khawat, a good ending of someone's life. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give Shifa to those who are sick, to forgive those who passed away and to accept our Salah Qiyam and our Ibadat in this month. Jazakumullah khayyam.